All right, so it's good to see you guys today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. He's always good. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to start in John chapter 16, verse 13. Father, we just come to you and we just thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that you're so good to us. We thank you, God, that you hear us, that you never leave us and you never forsake us. And we receive your love and we receive your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. So the title of my message today is God is not leaving you in the dark. John 13, uh, 16, 13 in the King James, it says, However, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak from himself, but whosoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. So God speaks to us. God is a spirit. He speaks to us from spirit to spirit. Another translation says, but when the truth, spirit of truth comes, he'll lead you into all truth. He will not speak his own words, but he'll speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come. And so what I want to get across today is that it shouldn't be odd when someone says the Lord has shown me something or God is telling me something or God is talking to me, especially when you have confidence in that person to hear from the Lord. We have to be open to the things of God when he speaks to us. You know, a lot of people put him off. A lot of people don't believe God is talking to them. Or a lot of people don't think or decide it wasn't for them. So I want to ask you a question today. Do you want a God that talks to you? I do. Don't you? Do you want to hear from this Holy Spirit? I do. Do you want an interactive relationship with God where you talk to him and he talks to you? Or do you just want to put him in a box, take him out on Sunday, go to church, and see what the preacher says, then put him back in the box for a week? Well, I know you guys don't want the latter. I want a God that talks to me and gives me direction and speaks into my life. I have to be willing to listen to what he says. And we know that there's a lot of voices out there. And we, talk, we want God's voice to be the loudest voice in our life. I want a God who talks to me. I want a God that uh, gives me direction, that speaks into my life. But I have to be willing to listen to what he says. So if you'll open your heart and ears to the Holy Spirit, he'll show you things to come. And I'm not talking about psychic abilities. I'm not talking about mystical spooky stuff you know sometimes people make god spooky he's not a spooky god he's real amen he's he's our creator we can talk to him do you know he did everything so that you and i could have a relationship with him that's what he wants he wants a talking relationship with you he wants you to talk to him and he talks back to you and you talk spirit to spirit amen now how does that work that works by putting him first in our lives that works by uh, allowing him to speak to us that works by obeying him when he does speak to us amen amen obeying him when he does speak to us see god's going to tell you to do some things and you got to be willing to listen to what he tells you to do and trust him and know that what he's telling you to do is the best is the best thing to do. So a real relationship with a real God who cares about me and speaks to my life. God talks to me in a lot of different ways. What about you? Sometimes I hear his voice when I'm alone and, and I see something beautiful. Like I look out at the sunset or see the mountains. I can sense his presence and I know that he's with me. Sometimes, you know, very few times have I heard him audibly. Mostly I hear him inside in that still, small voice on the inside of my spirit. Sometimes it's just downloaded, and all of a sudden I just know. So he talks to us in different ways. But it's okay, we've got to be open to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Amen? The more you're in the Word, the more you meditate on him, the more you're going to hear from him. 
Second Peter 1 3 says that he has given us his divine power for everything that we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him. So he's giving you everything you need to live this life on earth, but it comes through the knowledge of him. And so the more you grow in him, the more knowledge you receive about the Lord, the more you're going to be able to hear his voice, the more you're going to be able to discern what is right and what is wrong, and the more you're going to be able to stay on the path, the more you're going to be able to, to listen to what he says to you. Amen? Does that make sense? Because you're feeding your spirit. The more you feed your spirit, the more you're going to hear from God. Some people are just so spiritually dry. They're, they're, they're starving. They're starving for the things of God. Listen, you don't have to be in starvation. God is willing and ready to have a relationship with you any time that you're ready. You just have to open up and begin to feed your spirit, right? And allow the Holy Spirit to talk to you and fill your life up with the Word. Amen? And as you do that, then God's voice gets bigger and bigger in your life. Amen? You know, we can hear His voice different ways. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me. Are you his sheep today? I hope so. You hear his voice. You know what God is saying. He's speaking to you. So we follow God. We hear his voice. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I hear the voice of God. Some people don't like to say that. Why? You're his sheep. That's the voice you should be hearing. That's the voice that should be loudest in your life. Amen? Is God's voice. Amen. Amen. You're his sheep. And so, you know, this is important because a lot of Christians don't believe that they can hear from God. And I want to tell you today, if you're one of those Christians that don't believe that God will talk to you, then that is a lie from the pit of hell to keep you in bondage. Because God is a God that talks and has a lot to say. Amen. And he's a good God. And he'll minister to you. And he'll feed into you. And he'll talk to you. And he'll give you wisdom. And he'll give you kindness and love and mercy. He just wants to commune with you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you so much. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you say is, Good morning, Lord. And you know what he'll say? He'll say, Good morning. And he'll begin to speak to you. Sometimes he speaks to you while you're asleep. And he'll speak to your spirit. And you'll have dreams and visions. And you wake up and you go, God spoke to me while I was asleep. Why? Because he speaks to you from spirit to spirit. Amen? Your spirit doesn't go to sleep. Your body goes to sleep. But your spirit's still awake. And he speaks to you. Amen? And so... Those, that is the kind of relationship that we want to have where we go stronger and stronger in the Spirit of God. You know, a lot of people, they just kind of walk around and wonder what to do, and I don't know what to do next, and should I go down this road, or should I go down this road? Well, James tells us that if we ask God for wisdom, what will he do? He'll give it to us liberally. Amen? Don't we need the wisdom of God in this day and age? We sure do, right? And so we need that. If we talk to him, he'll talk back to us, and he'll give us the wisdom. Psalm 119 says he's a light unto our path. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. The message says it like this. By your words, I can see where I'm going. Don't you like to see where you're going? I I like to see where I'm going, and I like to see what I'm eating. I really don't like to go to a restaurant, and you know where you go, and it's ambiance, but the lights are real dim, and they bring out your food, and you can't see it, right? I like to know what I'm putting in my mouth, right? (laughs) And so I like light shined on it, right? Well, the same about my path. I like to know where I'm going. I like light shined on my path. I want to see where I'm going. And I know if God shines the light, I know it's the right place to go. Amen. He'll shine the light on your path. Look at your neighbor and tell him, 
I have a lit path, right? Your path is lit with the light of the Holy Spirit. He throws a beam of light on my dark path. He's not going to leave you in the dark. Amen. He throws a beam of light on your dark path. I committed myself. I'll never turn back from living by your righteous order. So God's not leaving you on your leaving you in the dark. The word is your lamp. The word is your light. In other words, the word shows you which way to go. It's your flashlight. Amen. So when you read the word and get it in your heart, then you're going to be able to listen to God, receive his direction, and fill your spirit up with him. But if you're filling your spirit up with other stuff, and I'm not saying it's bad, but if you're constantly listening to news and TV shows and Internet and Facebook and all this other stuff, then you're not going to hear his voice so much. Amen? Because those voices are going to be louder. Feed your spirit with God's word so you can hear God's voice. If you feed your spirit with God's voice, his voice is going to be loudest in your life. Why? Because it's the most consistent. Right? It's the most consistent. If you feed your spirit with, I don't know, CNN or MSNBC or or one of those news programs, or Facebook, or or whatever, any of that stuff, then that voice is going to be loudest in your life. Okay, so the media are God's voice. The media are God's voice. I think it's easy to choose which voice we want to be louder in our lives. Amen? Amen. I want God's voice to be loudest in my life. Romans ten seventeen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. What does that mean? To increase your faith, you have to listen to the word. Allow the word to strengthen you and make you strong. So we hear words. It gets into our spirit. It feeds our spirit and we grow. That's the process. So if you want to be stronger spiritually, listen to the word of God being preached. Listen to the word of God on CD. Read it out loud so you can hear it. Build your spirit up. When we do that, the word shines light on the dark places in our lives and gives us direction and helps us stay on course with God. Don't you feel better when you go to church? You should. When you walk out the door, you all that was good. Why? Because you just fed your spirit. And you know that people are spiritually starving. They will not physically starve. They'll eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and two snacks in between, right? They got to make sure these bodies are full. But yet, most Christians are spiritually starving because they only feed their spirit on Sunday. Listen, you got to feed your spirit every day day of the week. Amen. And even if you just start with five minutes a day in the word with your devotion, start with five minutes a day. Start with that. Start with just one scripture and meditate on that scripture all day long and let it minister to you. Amen. And if you do that, you will start building up your muscles, your spiritual muscles, and you'll get stronger and stronger. So look at your neighbor and tell him I'm getting strong. I'm getting strong. So to increase our faith, we have to listen to our word, listen to the word. Because when we listen to the word, the word shines the light on the dark places in our lives. And it gives us directions, helps us stay on course with God. I'm going to read chapter 4 of John. But before we do, I'm going to give you a little bit of background. The Samaritans, just to let you know, were part Jew and part Gentile, and they were considered outcasts and despised by the Jews. They had their own religious system in Samaria that competed with the claims of the Jews. So the scripture says that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Well, I believe God directed him because he had a plan for the woman at the well. Amen? The reason why is the common way would not have been to go through Samaria, but the common way would have been to head northwest to Jericho, cross over the River Jordan, and not not set foot in Samaria at all. But Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit through Samaria precisely for the purpose which unfolds in this chapter that I'm about to read. So John chapter 4, verse 4, 
He said, now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sikar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well, and it was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her and said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you the living water. Sir, the woman said, You have, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his son and his livestock? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming back here to draw water. He said to her, Go call your husband and come back. She said, I have no husband. He said to her, you were right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you've had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband. But what you have said is quite true. The woman said, sir, I can see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me. A time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and now has come, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they're the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in the truth. And the woman said, I know that. Messiah called Christ is coming when he comes he'll explain everything to us and then Jesus declared I the one speaking to you I am he what a moment so Jesus was thirsty and tired and sat down to rest and the woman came to the well to draw water around noon she was obviously an outcast in society because she did not have a servant to draw her water, and she came at a time when no one else would be there. And Jesus broke through two levels of prejudice. The woman he spoke to was not only, was not only Samaritan but female. For a Jewish man to speak to a Samaritan woman was unheard of, and she had probably never experienced a similar conversation. She represents an oppressed minority, still common, a still common reality in much of Middle Eastern culture. But Jesus, if you think about it, he was not racist and he was not sexist. He knew that his question would lead to far more than exchange of words and water. But he cuts to the chase and very bluntly challenges the woman about her lifestyle. And it was embarrassing to admit that she had no husband, but she was honest about who she was, and she didn't make excuses as to why she was there at noon. She didn't need to do that. She knew she didn't have a husband. She was just there to get water. And in doing so, she met her Savior, Jesus who knew about her life and offered her eternal life anyway. Did you know that God knows all about you? He knows your faults. He knows your weaknesses. He knows what you've been through. He knows what you're going to go through, and yet he loves you anyway. Praise God. And he wants a relationship with you that you can talk to them, and he can talk to you. The day that woman went to the well, she thought it was going to be any other day just like any other day. But yet that day, her life was interrupted. God interrupted her life because he had something to say. Will you let God interrupt your life? Will you let God speak to you because he has something to say? 
Will you let God direct you and shine a light on your path? Yeah. Amen. I want God to shine a light on my path, right? Amen. She received the gospel that day. John 4, 27 says, Just as his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking to this woman. But no one asked, What do you want or what, why are you talking to her? The disciples' astonishment was not only because of, of the exchange of words of Jews and Samaritans, but it was also unusual for a Jewish teacher to converse with a woman in a public place. Women were not to be saluted or spoken to in the street. They were not to be instructed by the law. But yet Jesus pushed through all of those cultural expectations. Praise God. You know Jesus can push through anything for you if you let him. It doesn't matter if you're old, if you're young. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. It, none of that stuff matters. What God is looking for is a willing heart, is a heart that will come to him, a heart that will have relationship with him, a heart that will speak to him, and a heart that will listen to him. He just wants relationship with you. John chapter 4, verse 28 says, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back into town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? And they came out of their town and they made their way towards him. This woman, who was an outcast in her whole village, led her whole village to the Lord because she heard his voice and listened. It says in John chapter 4, verse 39, many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. They knew her. They knew her. They knew who she was. They knew what she was. But now she's talking about a man who knows everything about him, and yet he loves me anyway. And he wants to have a relationship with me. He doesn't want to uh, uh, judge me. He's not. He's not scolding me. He's not. He's not uh, uh, telling me that I'm not any. That I'm not worthy. Quite the contrary. He's calling her to come. He's calling you to come. Amen. So many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of her testimony. He told me everything I did. So then, when the Samaritans came to him. They urged him to stay with him, and he stayed for two days. And because of his word, many more became believers. And they said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said, but now we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. As she heard what Jesus spoke to her, it set her free. Isn't that what the truth does? It sets us free. Amen. She was no longer ashamed of who she was. She was no longer embarrassed at her social position. She was no longer caring what others thought of her. She knew that she had just received the living water and that Jesus spoke to her life and he knew her and loved her anyway. God is not leaving you in the dark. Amen. He has a plan for your life. He has a path for your life. He wants you to be led by his light. And as you allow him to speak to you and lead you and guide you, you're going to see things happen in your life that you never thought would be possible. He's provided his word, his spirit, his son, everything that you need according to 2 Peter 1.3. He's given us the divine power for everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him. So whatever you need. Whatever you need in your life, God has an answer and a provision. Are there parts of your life that are embarrassing? Are there parts of your life that you're ashamed of? I want to tell you that Jesus has come so that you can be set free from shame. You can be set free from embarrassment. You can be set free from the things that try to hold you back. The Samaritan woman had a real conversation with God. She didn't try to hide anything. She said, this is who I am, and this is what I am. And you know what? Jesus accepted her just as she was. Jesus accepts you just as you are. 
But you have to have a real conversation with them. You have to be honest with them. A lot of times people go to the Lord and they try to make themselves look good to God. Listen, God already knows. He already knows about you. He knows the good stuff. He knows the bad stuff. He knows the stuff in between. And yet he loves you anyway. Look at your neighbor and tell him God loves me. Right? He loves you anyway. Sometimes as Christians, we make it too hard. We think that, you know, we, we bring religion into our relationship. And we come up with all of these rules. And we think that if we don't live by these rules, and don't get me wrong, there has to be structure and boundaries, of course. But we get caught up in the rules where we can't have relationship. God's not looking for ways to keep you out of heaven. God's not looking for ways to push you away from him. God's looking for you to come near to him. Amen. And he wants to talk to you and he wants to, he wants to commune with you and he wants to have a conversation with you and he wants to be intimate with you and he wants you to talk to him. Talking to God is the easiest thing in the world, sometimes through prayer. We have decided and we make it hard and we think we have to be formal and we have to say all these these and thous and, and talk in old English. And, and if, you know, we just don't have to talk that way to God. I talk to God like I talk to you. And as I talk to God, he talks to me in, in terms that I can understand and I can receive. And he'll talk to you in terms that you can understand and that you can receive, but you have to talk to him. Amen. And I think so many times that we think that we have to have a formal time of prayer, and that's good and that's great. Yes, of course. But try talking to God about everything in your life. Talking to him as you're driving down the road. Talking to him as you're running your errands. Talking to him as you're going from there to here. Talk to him in every part of your life and see what he says. Allow the Holy Spirit to interrupt your life and see what happens. God's not leaving you in the dark. He has a plan for your life, and he wants to be in relationship with you. But you have to be honest with him and allow yourself to be forgiven. Allow yourself to receive Jesus' love. And allow yourself to receive his words. Let's say this together. Lord, I come to you today. And I ask you to forgive all my sins. Cleanse my heart and life. I want to live for you. I want to be all you want me to be. Thank you for lighting my path. And being there for me. Thank you for speaking to me. And leading me and guiding me. Thank you for loving me. I love you. See how easy that is? So now I want to encourage you this week. If you haven't been talking to God, I want to encourage you. Spend time with him. Put him first. Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be added to you. If you got a lot on your plate, like me, I have a lot on my plate. But you know what? I have to seek him first. And as I seek him first, everything evens out. Amen? Everything will even out. What does that mean? That means you'll get your priorities straight. That means you'll know what's important. That means you'll know what's not important. I'm just going to say this right now. A lot of people's emergencies are not really emergencies. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so you'll know what is important, what is not important, and you'll begin to walk in peace because you spent time with him. And then when things come up against you, and things will come up against you, but you've spent your time with God, and you've let him speak to your spirit, And then as things begin to happen your way, you're going to speak from your spirit and you're going to be able to navigate your day 
navigate your life in a way that's on purpose and be proactive instead of reactive. Amen? Don't you want to be proactive instead of reactive? Amen. And it's peaceful. And it's strong. And it's good. And we can all live that way. Amen. So I encourage you today, whatever's coming up against you, God has an answer for. Whatever has happened and you need wisdom, look in James chapter 1. God will give you wisdom. Whatever it is that you need, there's an answer. Right? And God has it for you. So let his voice be the loudest voice in your life. Let's pray. Father, I just come to you and I just pray for each person. Lord, as we come to you, we just commit our lives to you once again, God, to put you first and allow your voice to be the strongest in our lives. We thank you, Father. We love you, Father. That, <laughs> that you have a plan, that you have a mission, that you have a promise for each one of us. Thank you, God. And, Lord, we commit to stay on that path, to stay in that plan, and to stay on that course. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. All right. You guys have a great week. Remember, we have Wednesday night service um, at the other location. If you need it, just let me know. But we're talking about what to do when the devil attacks and to get strong and be in the word. And I hope to see you there. And just know, you know, that uh, as you begin to hear God's voice, know that he's going to say something to you. He's going to put you on the right path. He's going to show you the right job. He's going to get you to your path of healing. But you have to listen to his word. Amen. Pastor Lewis, you want to stand and close us in prayer?